guys, welcome to Storytime Sunday. Um, I am super happy to be back on my filming schedule. I was off of it for a couple days because we had some problems with a new computer, but we are back in business, baby. So today's subject is going to be about one of my favorite memories ever with my friends back home in Florida. Before I even, like, completely moved here to New York, I was living in West Palm, you guys all know that, and all my friends and I, well there was a group of us, uh, we were literally inseparable. Like when I mean inseparable, I mean we were never, like not together. And it was one of those friendships, well, the group mindset was that, you know, we could go anywhere with no money and we'd always have fun. We were the life of any party we went to, and we went to a lot of parties. I didn't go to a lot of parties because... I just wasn't into that scene. Even back then, being the age that I was, I really wasn't about that life. But I always went to concerts that the guys had actually played at, which I will get to in a minute. That is the subject of today's video. But the first and last, like, block party I went to was actually um, one my friend Tony put on. Um, where they lived, it was, like, secluded, and it was a private road. So, really, they were the only ones back there. So, we were allowed to have, like, parties whenever we wanted to. And this one time in particular... I was like, you know what, I'm going to go have fun, like, for once. Just go out and see what it's like and be a teenager because I had never done that before. So, went to this party and immediately regretted it because there was literally, like, 500 people at this party. And I was like, I don't like this situation. I'm just, I'm not the kind of person who likes to be in huge groups of people, especially that, that, that big of a group. And these were, like, people I had no idea who they were. Like, no clue who they were. The party was abruptly ended when something had happened, I forgot what it was, but it had completely ended with Tony shooting off his pistol into the air. I cannot tell you how fast I ran for my life. I was gone. You have never seen panic until someone shoots a random ass bullet into the, into the air and people are dispersing and running for their lives. Like, it was the crazy, it was like something out of Project X. Not even kidding. Like, if you can think that amount of people running for their lives because someone shot a random ass bullet into the air, that's what I was living through. And it was not a fun time. That was the first and last time I went to any of his parties or any party like that. Period. Um, we were really, really close. And I actually have a picture. I'll show you guys. So my best friend Andy had made me this book. Um, for Christmas, I think it was like two years ago, and I didn't get it until the last until I moved there last um, winter. And when I saw this book, I cried because there are so many pictures of me when I was a teenager. Like here I am here. Look at the acne on my face. <sighs> Thank God it's over with. But there are so many pictures of just random ass nights that we would have. But the picture I wanted to show you guys was the one of the group all together at one of our friends' house. So, this is all of us. I'm going to stand up for you guys. This is me right here. And then this is all the rest of my brothers right here. Um, and this is, like, all the rest of us. This is pretty much essentially the group that I was a part of that we were all, like, always together. A couple people missing, but for the most part that was all of us in the one shot. Which I honestly miss that kind of, like... Friendship. I miss having all these people around me. They were, each of them individually was a beautiful person. And even though we all kind of went our separate ways, I still like find solace in the fact that I still have these memories to look back on and remember all the fun times I have with these people individually. Like, I just, I miss them and love them so much. So, yeah, if you guys are watching, I love you. Mother Hand loves you. So, anyways, this story is actually regarding a. Um, a gig that the guys had played with. The reason why we were all so close was because there were one, two, three, I want to say like four people in that picture who were a part of the like group band and the very first performance they ever had was at the school town show at San Lucius back in 2010 I think it was and it was literally the most remarkable performances I've ever seen in my life. My brother is a drummer and he was a drummer for that band. And they all came out with, like, dress shirts and, like, like the cutest fucking outfits. Like, you would have been like, holy shit, they're so cute. But they were fucking adorable. Like, I it was obsessed with the outfits they chose. They all looked matching. They all looked professional as fuck. Like, fly as shit. Went on this stage 
and completely slayed everybody. Like it was a mass slayage of epic proportions. The high school that we all went to was considered like the ghetto school of Palm Beach County. So predominantly a lot of the people who actually performed in the talent show were like dancers. Of course, that was like the main thing. There was some like um, spoken word, poetry, all that kind of stuff. It was really, really nice. And of course, some singers, of course. But they literally beat the dog shit out of everybody. And it was so surprising because I was so afraid of how everyone was going to take their genre of music. If you guys listen to like post-hardcore, hardcore music, A Day to Remember, August Burns Red, those were their like main influences. If you've never listened to it, it's kind of hard to get used to. A Day to Remember is my literally my favorite band of all life. Like all my tattoos are their lyrics. So that was that performance. That was their very first performance and that's when they knew that they had something good going and they ran with it. Like they went so far playing in Miami at gigs, playing at different little mom and pop places. Like, they did so well, and I miss them so much, and I wish they would have went further with it, but eventually things kind of just went the different ways, didn't work out that well. But the one performance I will never in my life forget was when they played at Solid Sound Studios, which is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The best parts of the friendship we all shared was on gig days, because everyone would spend all day together Go to the beach, go wherever, the girls would go be by themselves, so it would be me, Andy, Hannah, and one of the girlfriends, if the guys had a girlfriend, they always went with us for the gigs. The guys rode together, the girls rode together, that was how things were. So, we would spend the day separated for a couple hours, and then we'd meet back up around noon, get the equipment ready, and then figure out who was riding in which vehicle. So this one gig in particular, um, we had just became friends with this guy named Travis, and Travis was truly an experience in and of itself. He was the most remarkably funny person I had ever met up until that point. And I found it so easy to get along with him because he was so like funky, he was so funny, like had no problem making a fool of himself to make people laugh. Like I have the same thing. I, I will make myself look like an idiot in order to make someone laugh. It's my favorite thing to do in the world. I've been going to gigs my entire life. My dad's in a band. He has been my entire life. So I've been to many, many festivals, music festivals, gigs, bars, you name it. I have grew up in those kind of things. So to me, I've seen many, many like bar fights, you know, bitches fighting each other, whatever. This was literally the most memorable thing I've ever seen ever in my life at a gig. So we all pal into the cars get the equipment loaded up, and travel down to Fort Lauderdale. Get to Fort Lauderdale, unload everything, and then while we are waiting for the guys to get on stage, we decided to go outside and just relax out in the cool air because the venue we were at was literally the smallest um, warehouse I've ever been in, ever. And it was so crowded, especially with all the people we had in there from the other bands and everything. It was super overheated. They had like one or two big fans going, and then one small one, which is the highlight of this entire thing, going at all times just to keep the air flowing because it got so hot with all the equipment, all the people, and people constantly moving and creating body heat. It was just fucking is a sauna. Andy and I were by her vehicle just talking about different things, just, you know, staying out outside of that warehouse because we were not going to go in there until we actually had to. And we noticed that Lalo, who was the lead singer of the guy's band, and Travis were headed over to this building. We hadn't noticed this, and they were the first ones to notice it, but there was a sex toy shop right next door to this venue. So these two guys decided, let's go check it out and see what's there. Um, we didn't think anything of it. We just thought they were going to get their kicks and, you know, do what they had to do there and then come back. So we get into the actual venue about five minutes before the show actual starts for our guys band. And Travis and Lolo walk in together with a big ass black bag. So I was like, holy crap, they bought something. So I thought it was like porn or something or magazines that were going to like take home and enjoy to themselves. The lights go out in the venue. And all you see is the, like the lasers and stuff, like the little mini lights go off. I don't notice it at first because it's so dark at this point, and the lights really haven't, my eyes haven't adjusted to the darkness and the lights going. I didn't notice anything until someone pointed out that there was a huge black dildo now stuck onto one of the main fans. 
just thinking about it is killing me right now. It honestly, it was one of those things that you just had, you just had to be there to, like to like to understand how ridiculous this was. So all of a sudden, like I said, we see this giant dildo, and this isn't even like a personal use. This is literally a novelty gargantuan black dildo flopping around on this random ass fan and people are dying at this point. So after we initially got, you know, punched in the giggle dick and started dying, everyone is like simultaneously laughing their asses off. Eventually the show just goes on and people kind of forget about the dildo until someone gets the bright idea to turn the fan to a faster speed. This thing goes flying. It gets hang time like you wouldn't believe. And now it is flying across the room into the now mosh pit that is happening in the middle of the venue. So now there is like mass chaos because people are trying to avoid this big, large, extra grande fucking dildo like you wouldn't believe. They are literally running this way, running that way because people are grabbing it and flopping it around everywhere. So then someone turns it into an actual mosh pit weapon and starts to whack people upside the head with this dildo. The guy's mosh pit ended and now the girl started to do their thing. I stayed out of it in the corner and did this because I wasn't about that life. But now the girls were going after this dildo and they were chasing each other, whacking each other in the butts with it, trying to shove up guys' butts. Like they were just being rambunctious and very obnoxious, but it was the funniest thing ever. If you know mosh pits, you know they're pretty brutal sometimes. Think of a brutal mosh pit now involving a big black dildo. That's essentially what this was. What made things kind of have to die down and actually made things a lot more funny at the same time was the fact that Travis was not a small guy. He was a big gorilla bitch. Like, big, 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 big guy. And he got into the guys, because the guy, the girls ended there, so it was a really brief thing and like three girls got involved. The guys came back into their wall of death thing they did right into the middle of the fucking venue. And then Travis comes and starts wrecking people, like absolutely obliterating these guys. Grabs the dildo and after he already hits them in the face with his elbow, proceeds to bitch slap them with this floppy ass dildo across the face. After the, the guy's set had finished, when the lights turned on, you saw the reality of the damage that this dildo had inflicted on people. Bru bloody noses, bruised eyes, bruised cheeks, cuts, busted ass lips. It was just, it was the weirdest experience ever. I mean, I'm sorry this probably isn't the best video for you guys. These people were a very big part of my life for a very long time and a couple of them still are. And I still value the friendship that, I, that we've had even to this day. Like. Things that they don't remember, I have memories of. Like when I met Matt Grenier from August Burns Red and JB from August Burns Red. Like that's me literally standing with Matt Grenier from August Burns Red. This was the guy who was in the band and this is Justin, he was in the band as well. Um, that's me and that's JB from August Burns Red. Thanks so much for watching guys. I love you and I'll see you guys in the next video.